Welcome back. The Alberta Construction Association's Northern Alberta Road Tour made a stop in Lordminster to talk to a local company today. Cody Bexton, co-owner and vice president of Bexton Construction, spoke with the group about various topics, including smaller markets and how they're doing in the current political climate. I guess just to get a read of uh, our company, how we're doing, um, how many employees we're, we have at the moment, uh, what our outlook is, um, and I guess just how changes or political unrest, uh, one way to put it, um, affects our business. Uh, the ACA tour is to talk about and recognize construction in communities they visit. Like Lloydminster, Red Deer, so they're trying to reach out to them, make sure that we're being looked after and that we have a voice as far as um, the construction industry goes so that we're being heard and it's not just Edmonton, Calgary. ACA has already stopped in Le uh, Red Deer, Lethbridge and Medicine Hat and will be going to Grand Prairie later in the week. Well, Movie Night is making its return in St. Paul this week. Here's Toasty from Real Country 97.7 with your details in What's Happening. Hey, it's Toasty for Real Country 97.7 and here's what's happening in the town of St. Paul and area. It's the last week for the Community Walking Club and Urban Pulling with the Town of St. Paul FCSS. Walks will begin at 12.30 on Tuesday and Thursday this week at the FCSS office. It's free, it's fun, it's exercising, and you might make some new friends. The County of St. Paul and Elk Point FCSS returns with a couple more movies this week. On Thursday in Hinesburg, check out The Odd Life of Timothy Green. And then on Friday in Boscombe, they're hosting Wrinkle in Time. Movies will begin at dusk, and make sure to bring your own seats. Show up early so you can get the best spot. If you're born to perform on stage, start preparing because come September, the St. Paul and District Arts Foundation will be hosting auditions for The Nutcracker. They're looking for dancers, actors, vocalists, and performers, so whatever your craft is, no experience is needed either. You could be the next big star. It's up to you. The St. Paul Boys and Girls Club is hosting a fundraiser that could be sending you somewhere nice or somewhere not so nice. Really just depends on your choice of where to fly. For a $20 raffle ticket, you'll be entered into the raffle to win a pair of tickets to go anywhere WestJet flies. You can get your tickets from me here at the station or from someone who works at the Boys and Girls Club. The draw will be in October and you can buy as many tickets as you want. The Saddle Lake Boys and Girls Club is and the Minor Hockey are hosting a three-on-three -three ball hockey tournament. You think you and your four to 10 friends have what it takes to win? Well, boys and girls aged eight to 18 can put together a team and will try to win big if you want that trophy. You have until July 31st to get your lead team of ball hockey champs together. Registration costs $50 and you can pick up your registration forms at the Youth Center in Saddle Lake. You can find these events and more at our website, realcountrystpaul.ca. If you have an event you'd like us to feature on what's happening, please email me at toasty at realcountry.ca. And former NHLer Theo Fleury will be in Lac La Biche for the Victor Walk later this week. Here's Scott Mitchell from Boom 103.5 with what's happening in Lac La Biche. Hey, I'm Scott Mitchell from Boom 103.5 with a look at what's happening in Lac La Biche County. NHL alumni Theo Fleury will be in town on Wednesday for the Victor Walk. This is a national movement against childhood trauma and a rally will be happening beginning at 12 o'clock at MacArthur Park and we'll finish with a walk over at Hope Haven Women's Shelter. If you want more details, you can visit victorwalk.org and you can support them that way as well and it goes to support the Breaking Free Foundation. If you want more details, you can also call the shelter. Midsummer Sports Days is happening in Lac La Biche on the August long weekend, August 4th, 5th, and 6th. All sports, all ages, all weekend, presented by Lac La Biche Minor Ball and Kids Sport, and it will go to benefit many organizations across our region. There's also a sports zone with fun games for all ages, concessions, and a pancake breakfast throughout the weekend as well. And the Midget AA Provincial Championships will actually be held right here in Lac La Biche that weekend too. If you want more details and to register using Visa, MasterCard, or e-transfer, you can visit lacklabicheminorball.ca. Boom 103.5 is giving you a chance to win $1,035 with our songs this summer. All you got to do is be listening to Boom Morning sometime between 6 and 11. We're going to be playing you our special song of the day that we will identify 
And if you call in at 623-3701 when that song is playing, you will qualify for the weekly draw, which could get you into the final draw for that cash prize. If you want more details on these events, contests, and more, you can visit our website at boom1035.com. And if you have an event you would like us to feature on what's happening, email me one week in advance, scott at boom1035.com. Well, Colonial Days faced a flurry of rain and wind to end a festive week. This week in retrospect, our Josh Ryan looks at how that challenge has always existed for Lloyd Minster's largest summer event. Not much is left of the fair today. Crews have been busy tearing down since Saturday night and have completed most of the major cleanup with only minor jobs remaining. For the most part, organizers say this year's event went off without a hitch. We had a few little things. Uh, not everything always works out, but uh, as far as we know, there's been no major problems and uh, it, everything worked well. Weather wreaked the most havoc over the four days. Rain and a vicious thunderstorm kept many residents at home, leading to slower turnstiles and about a 5% drop in attendance. We got, the, we got the rains at the most inopportune times uh, for the people to come down and enjoy the fair, and it held them out for a bit. But our crowds were still very good, and Saturday was, we had lots of people on the grounds during the day, but we just lost our evening. Rain wasn't the only problem, though. Wednesday's scorching heat wave also kept many locals in the cool confines of their homes. The heat on Wednesday and Thursday during the day was probably as damaging as it, the rain was Friday and Saturday night, but uh, the heat is, is uh, it creates major thunderstorms, and that's usually what happens. So, I, it, in all in all, people seem to be happy with how it all went. Some new attractions made their debut this year, including a group of white tigers. Every show, the bleachers were full. Uh, I was pleased. They were pleased. Uh, and, uh, and from what I'm hearing from the feedback from the public, it was a good show. 20 years later, Colonial Days has more vendors, more rides, and nearly twice the attendance. The event also continues to face the same challenge, Mother Nature. Weather plays such a huge role. It's either going to be wet or even worse is too hot because that excessive heat can really impact people's state. Despite bursts of wind and rain at the beginning and end of the fair, along with a rain out on Friday evening, there was only a slight drop in attendance. Last year we were right around to 40,000 people. This year right around 38,000 visits. So down a little bit, about 4 or 5%, which isn't too bad considering, considering the weather impacts. There's another element to Colonial Days that hasn't changed. A community that enjoys the festivities year after year, which Sidoric is grateful for. For coming in once again to support Lloydminster Colonial Days, because this is really an event for our whole region. Sidoric isn't ready to spill on plans for next year, though he has some ideas. We want people to get excited closer to, you know, we get those nicely good launches. For This Week in Retrospect, I'm Josh Ryan.